everything we do sets an example of what others think they have to do. Wherever you feel fear, that's where you You've should You've got to become things. the person that will attract over 200 different cognitive biases. The real work in any business is thinking. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the FLW Podcast. I am Cody DeGraff here with my co-host, Gabriel Klingman. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for taking the time to check this out. This interview is going to be epic. Just a quick reminder, if you can hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world to us. And guys, we are so excited to have John Haremza on the show today. Now, for those of you who don't know him, John is a network marketing legend with 30 years in the business, leading his people to earnings of over $250 million. This guy is unbelievable. Um, his leadership has helped change countless lives around the world. He's also shared the stage with some of the most successful entrepreneurs of our time, helping people better their businesses. Uh, he's a brilliant author, an amazing family man, and I really can't say enough about the guy. But John, thanks so much for coming on the show. How are you doing, brother? I am doing fantastic, Cody. Thank you. It's great to be here. And I wanted to also extend a very uh, a belated happy birthday. If I'm not mistaken, you had a birthday recently? Yes, last week, actually a week ago today. Well, happy birthday, brother. It's happy that's really birthday. Awesome. So, John, what we like to do at the very beginning of our show is we like to just kind of do a little bit of an icebreaker fun game. Um, it's, it's kind of just asking you, uh, would you rather kind of questions. So, what would you rather have, dogs or cats? Uh, definitely dogs. Definitely. I feel that. Uh, beach or mountain, which you prefer? Oh, man. Uh, mountain. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Okay. Forever Minnesota for you or forever Nevada? You know what? I'm loving Nevada. Are really you really? Like it. Interesting. Yeah. And you grew up in Minnesota, is that correct? I did. Yeah, yeah. land of mosquitoes and 10,000 lakes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've been there. That's about right. That's about right. Um, yacht or jet? Uh, yacht. Mm. Awesome. And how about hunting or fishing? Hmm. That's another tough one. I love them both, but probably fishing. That's super right? cool. Right. So um, if you don't mind, we're just going to dive right in here. Uh, so over this past year, specifically with COVID, things have been going crazy. You got social distancing being mandatory. Um, what are some of the shifts that you've made in your business? And what is some advice that you can give for other people? Well, I mean, obviously, um, you know, not having to do meetings because I was traveling a ton prior mm. to COVID. Yeah. And, you know, making that immediate shift uh, to Zooms. And so with, I was just telling somebody this um, earlier today, how here I'm not traveling and I am so unbelievably busy because I'm doing, yeah. you know, instead of doing two Zooms a week, I'm doing four or five Zooms a day, mm -hmm. um, you know, three ways. And, and of course, also embracing, you know, social media, uh, more social media, more of the digital platforms. I think that's becoming a bigger and bigger part of what we do. Uh, don't, of course, we'll never forget the fundamentals of, of, you know, people buying people and that human interaction, but getting information to people, utilizing tools more, the apps. Um, but primarily the biggest, the biggest shift is um, to, you know, online meetings, online events, online conferences, online, everything. Mm -hmm. Zoom. Fantastic. Um, with, uh, as you kind of take this in a different direction, would you be able to share a little bit of your story on how you came to be uh, the network marketing guru that you are? Yeah, well, um, you know, I grew up in a small town in Minnesota, mm -hmm. a town of about 2,000 people, and um, I have dyslexia. I still struggle with it today. Back then, it really affected my self-esteem and my self-confidence. So I was very, very shy and introverted, literally wouldn't even say hi to someone unless wow. they said hi to me first. And wow. so uh, I think I kind of just got through high school. I tried to be invisible, just this quiet little kid in the corner. And they just kind of, you know, guided me through class, school. And so right out of high school, I went to work in a factory, a potato chip manufacturing fa factory. I was a welder, building, maintaining equipment. A friend of mine entered, invited me to his home uh, to look at a water filter. This was 32 years ago. Interesting. Um, a company called NSA. And I thought they wanted me to build a display. I mean, not sell anything. Cause again, I literally wouldn't even talk to anybody. And, and so I got excited about the product. Yeah. And what was interesting, I, I got so excited. I wrote a check on the spot for $480. <laughs> I was living <laughs> yeah. in a trailer house. 
um, in, in Minnesota. This was December of 1988. I brought him home to, at that time was my fiance. And she's like, oh my God, you spent some money. What did you do? And, and so I told her, and um, I went out that weekend to a neighboring town. This is December yeah. in Minnesota, mm -hmm. knocking on doors, asking someone to try this filter because we'd leave it with people for a week. It was called a puppy dog. And you'd let them yeah. try it for an entire week. And then you'd come back and like leaving them with a puppy dog. They didn't want to give it up. Mm -hmm. And so I got three people to, I had four filters. I got three people to try them mm -hmm. and um, came back a week later. I had brought my brother with me now for moral support. Yeah. I sold one of the three filters. I bought okay. it for 120. I sold it for 179. I put $59 in my pocket. I remember looking at my brother and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be rich. I mean, this was the easiest. <laughs> yeah. That first the easiest sale makes such a difference. Yeah, well, it's the easiest $59 I'd ever earned. And so now my brother wants to get involved. And, and I'm just like, you know, I don't know. And I don't want anyone else to do this, right? <laughs> I'm like, you know, why would I want to create my own competition? And I said, right. okay, you're my brother. I'm going to let you in on this but we need to make a pact between us. No one else is to know about this. Wow. And so, you know, I entered the industry 32 years ago, knocking on doors, trying to sell a water filter, thinking that I don't want to sponsor anybody. I wanted to wow. keep a secret. And so I, I did it part-time for six months. And, and what changed, I went to an event yep. uh, in a neighboring town of uh, uh, Fargo, North Dakota, um, about an hour and a half away. And after the event, I went up to the speaker and, I, and I'm still part-time. I went up to the speaker and I just like, oh, you know, I'm so excited. I'm going to go, you know, canvas Fargo and place a bunch of filters. And, and he says, you're going to do what? And I said, well, I'm going to go knock on doors and get a bunch of people. And he said, I made $203,000 last year. And he said, if you told me I had to knock on doors to do it, I'd have never done it. And he says, who's your upline? And I told him, and he says, you're actually in my downline. And he brought me up into his room after the event and he showed me the concept of not just selling the product, but also sharing the opportunity and the concept of leverage in building a team. And I left that with a complete paradigm shift, completely changed my focus. A few months later, I ended up going full time. I became a national marketing director in that company, which was second from the top position um, in 16 months. And I was there for four years. And, you know, in that four year window, you know, I made about $400,000, which coming from $9 an hour is pretty life changing. That's a huge difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, just opened up a world, you know, personal development. I mean, it was said to me um, a long time ago, and I remember it, you know, network marketing is a personal development program with a paycheck. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, so true. Yeah, so that was my entry, and I, you know, um, realized I wanted a consumable product to build more of a residual. Uh, I wanted something a little bit newer, and, and earlier in the growth cycle, the company was going through some challenges, and and so, you know, the next company I was with, I, I ended up being there for 12 years, um, and then the company got sold, and then it got merged and sold again, and I just lost my belief. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's what I tell people is probably the most important element for your success. It's belief, right? People by people. Yeah. And, and I lost my belief And that when you don't believe in something, I mean, everything has its ups and downs and hiccups and hurdles and, and you have to be able to weather the storm and, and move through that. But, you know, sometimes it reaches a point where, where, where there's no return in your own mind. And I'd reached that. And so then I um, joined another company and I spent the next 12 years there. And that's where I made my first really big money. I actually made $10 million there. Um, and then I ended up having a, a major issue uh, that affected my trust with the owner and, and, and led me to where I am today. And so, you know, I came wow. from small town of Minnesota, mm -hmm. learning disability, trying to keep network marketing a secret, not wanting anybody yeah. else to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, having, you know, been with four companies, but it's been every experience has been phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I've had great success in every one. And, you know, to date, you know, a little over 24 million in earnings. Dude, it's and it's amazing. And congratulations on your success. You're you're such an inspiration to so many people. And um, and with that being said, I wanted to talk with you a little bit about some of the books that you've written. Um, you've okay. written a phenomenal book um, that's that just kind of talks about um, 
the average, basically the difference between phenomenal success and average success. And uh, it's, I believe the title of that book is Right or Almost Right. Can you kind of share a little bit about that book? Well, I, I think the inspiration, you know, behind the book was, you know, having, you know, traveling all over the world, mm. um, you know, talking to people and, you know, I find very sharp, you know, talented, hardworking people seemingly doing everything right, but yet they're struggling. Yeah. And so the question is, were they doing it right or almost right? Interesting. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so it, it, as you said, it's a very fundamental book. And it takes everything that we do on a daily basis and to grow our business, to grow our leadership, to grow our teams. And it talks about what you're most likely doing and the little adjustment you can make that can make all the difference. And I think this is true. Um, I had one of the best compliments from my daughter, you know, because she read the book and she says, Dad, you know, this this is a life book. This this can help you with life. Yeah. Um, but as a specific to network marketing, all of these things that we do. You know, yeah. from the way you do a three-way call to the, to, you know, telling your story, to follow up, to, you know, spending time with the right people, making big, biggest mistakes you make. I mean, the whole thing from A to Z, dissecting everything you do, helping you make little adjustments that can make a major difference wow. you know, in, in what you do. Yeah. Love that. Oh, Absolutely good. love that. I also wanted to chat with you about um, your newer writings, which is the network marketing in the new world. Can you kind of share a little bit about that book and the inspiration behind that as well? Well, um, the world has changed. The world has changed forever. And so many people I think are, are froze. They're stuck in the old world, resisting change, resisting mm -hmm. the new technology. Uh, and, and so it's really a book to help not leave behind because I really emphasize the fundamentals are the fundamentals are the fundamentals. Okay. Yes, I mean, yes. there are some things that will never change. We're a people business, right? Of course. Because right. I see other people shifting too far, right? And to yeah. the digital side, to the to to if you take out the human element, right? Mm. If you if you eliminate that, what do they need us for? Right. If it's all about, yeah. you know, um, if it's all 100 percent digital and we take out what we do right as people by people. So it's it's really a book to help take the new world in the digital world and how you add it to the fundamentals of what we do and will never change. That's amazing. Okay? That's amazing. Would you be able to yeah. break so, down a few of those uh, tac those techniques and tactics on like what recruiting specifically looks like in a digital world? That's the thing that's really confused. That's really been difficult for me to grasp. Well, I think the biggest thing there is putting the human element into it, right? I mean, yeah. and and you take and and let's you know we have you know and a lot of companies have apps today, right? Yeah. And this is true in the physical world and in the digital world. When you position a tool with somebody, whether that's giving them a tool physically or whether you're sending them a digital tool, a video, um, you know, a digital link, you know, something to review, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't position that tool properly, it's not going to get viewed. Or, or You see, the whole, the whole goal is to build, um, I always say you, wanna, you want to stimulate an interest, not satisfy an interest. Come on, right? come yeah. on. And so, yeah, yeah. so uh, you know, I'm going to call you, um, Gabe, and I'm going to say, um, you know, Gabe, listen, I've got something, right? You've got to check this thing out. And you may say, well, what is it? Say, listen, I'm going to send you a link. You're not going to believe this. You've got to check this out. So I want to leave you with incredible anticipation and, and curiosity, right? Yeah. So you're anticipating the link. You're anticipating, I can't wait to see what he's talking about here. Where one of the mistakes, and I talk about this in Writer Almost Right too, is I tell you everything, then you prejudge and you don't think you need to look at it, right? Got it. Yeah, or yeah. If you go the other direction in the digital world and you send somebody a link and you don't preface that link, you don't get them excited about receiving it, they're not going to open it. People don't open things they don't know. Even if it's from somebody they know, they won't open it. But if wow. I and I and I tell you up front, you know, Gabe, listen, you're going to need to you're going to need to put your name and your email address in here. And that's going to give you access to look at what I'm talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. Where if I don't if I don't do that up front, you're going to open it up. If you do open it, you're going to open it up and it's going to ask you for your information. and You're going to freeze right there. I'm not doing this. 100%. Right. Wow. But if I get you. Um, if I if I set that stage, then you open it up and you say, oh, John told me I was going to have to do that to actually see what he's talking about. 
right? So part of the old world, the new world, the digital world, it's the way you, the mistake people make is they just try to send some, send stuff out without positioning it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. That's so interesting. Arnold Schwarzenegger had a, a similar approach to working out where he would say, um, always stay hungry. That was his whole thing. Whereas you don't want to satisfy your needs for working out. You don't want to satisfy us. You want to always stay hungry. And it sounds like that same principle applies here. Yeah, no, absolutely. You want to whet that appetite. You want to, you want to get that person anxious to see what it is you're talking about. And, and that is one of the biggest mistakes, old world, new world, you know, in our world today, you want to create that curiosity. Don't give them a drink, you know, because the mistake people will make, somebody will express a little interest, right? That first initial contact. And then you, then you give them a drink with a fire hose. You just unload on them, right? <laughs> is, yes. I always say, leave people wanting more. Be, have the discipline. When someone says, this sounds great, tell me more. You hold off and you say, I'll send you a link. Let the tools do the work, mm -hmm. right? That takes because a lot of time I'm, off of you too. Yeah, and it's duplicatable because I can take and mesmerize you with my knowledge and understanding of comp plan or whatever, right? And then you're going to wake up the next morning and think, I could never do that. But if I just say, you know, you're asking me questions about the comp plan or you're asking me questions about the product or whatever, um, I stimulate that interest and I send you a link to explain it, right? Because that's something everybody can do. Love I always say it. everything we do sets an example of what others think they have to do, right? Yeah. And so a huge mistake, cause especially as you, we get lead, we leaders and we wonder why our system breaks down because mm -hmm. we're teaching the system, but yet we're shortcutting the system ourselves. Right. So right. I still do the same <clears throat> things that I teach. That's awesome. That's awesome. So now I, you know, I've been in the industry, the network marketing industry for a while myself, not nearly as long as you have, obviously. Um, but I, I guess one of the things that I noticed as a leader that I struggled with a lot was, um, you know, you get these people that see the vision of the company, whether it's the product or the service, whatever it is, they're all in excited. But then there's a large percentage of people that quit. And I guess my question is, as a leader in the industry, how can we help better um, people in their success um, before they get to that point of uh, quitting? Well, I, again, you know, um, I think this is one of the most important parts. I would say our job as an upline, our mm. job as, as, as someone's sponsor is to keep them in one more day. Yeah, right. Exactly. If we keep yeah. them in one more day, we might keep in a lifetime. And, and we know this world is filled full of negatives. Our lives, you know, are full of self-doubt. Mm. And, and every day we think about quitting. Right. So every time I have a conversation with somebody, regardless of really how long they've been in, I'll, and I need to address an issue or whatever, you know, I'll first excite them and then I'll share the information, then I'll get them excited again. Um, but one of the most important things I believe to keep that new, that newbie, that new person in yeah. focus yeah. is they have to stay plugged in. Right. Mm, I mean, yeah. and so you're telling me what you want to do and you want to be successful and you're not on the calls, you're not on the Zooms, right? You're not attending the events, um, you're gonna disappear. And this yeah. is true yeah. about everything. I mean, you mentioned working out with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, you know, you 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 say you're gonna work out and you work out great for a week and all of a sudden you take two weeks off, you're not coming back. Mm. <laughs> right. So I mean, true. this is an everyday business. So keeping people engaged even a little bit every day to keep, to keep it, you know, top of mind to keep them, you know, on the calls. Hey, you, you could, you, you might not sponsor anybody, you know, for six months, but if you're on the call every day or every week or several times a week, eventually you're going to get it right. Yeah, your confidence, absolutely. your belief, you're going to, you're going to stay in long enough to find someone. Absolutely. So staying plugged, staying plugged in with those people and not just letting them swim alone, mm -hmm. <laughs> essentially. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's, you know, and, and, you know, one of the things I talk about in the book, too, is I talk about one of the biggest mistakes, you know, people make is they spend time with the wrong people, right? Interesting. Come and on, so, come on. Yeah, because this is, this is, um, it's kind of interesting, because it can, I don't want to be misunderstood, because everyone counts. You don't know when someone is going to engage, when something life changing is going to happen that makes them pay attention. Yeah. They stumble into the right person. So keeping them in one more day but yeah. you don't spend major time with that, yeah. right? Yeah. And you can take and, and waste a year trying to make someone do the business. It doesn't take 
that much energy to keep them in the business, keep them exposed. So that, that, but you spend your time working with the ones that are really engaged. So people say, well, how do you know? And I love fishing analogies, right? I say it's, it's kind of like when you're fishing and you're, you know, you, you get a nibble, um, and, you know, you, you, you maybe get a bite and you're reeling it in and you're asking yourself, you know, I wonder if this is a big fish or not. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It isn't. If it's a big fish, you know, the rod's pinned to the rail and it's taken out line. So <laughs> yeah. in our business, how do you know when it's a big, it, because they're calling you versus yeah. you calling them. Right. I'm yeah. not having to remind you if you're coming to the meeting, you're coming, right? right. You're doing, I'm not asking you to do it. So it, yeah. it, the clues are very, very, uh, you know, otherwise, and, and when you're working with somebody that really wants to do it, this business is fun and this business is easy. Uh, you know, what, but when you're pulling, pulling teeth, uh, trying to make somebody do it, you know, that's where the frustration comes in. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we still have to do both, right? <laughs> because yeah, you true. never know when, when that person's going to engage or who they're going to lead you to or when something's going to change in their life. So you keep them all in, but spend your major time driving the people that are ready, driving the people that are doing what you're asking them to do versus them, you know, you know, you're not versus you begging them to do it. Yeah, right? absolutely. No, that's so good. That's so good. Now you just made a post the other day that I really appreciated. You said um, it was, I don't know where you pulled it from or if you wrote it yourself, but it says you just, um, it says when you focus on what you want, everything else falls away. Now, could you kind of dive into that a little bit as to what, what does that mean? Well, I think that, that, that I think when you focus, let's just talk about the word focus. Yeah, that's okay? good. Yep. Focus is one of the most powerful words there is. And, and the problem is a lot of people think they're focused, but whatever it is you're actually focused on will become your reality. And this, you, <laughs> yeah. can, you can look at anything in your life. I don't care if you want to buy a new car, you want to buy a new refrigerator, a new outfit. Yeah. If you focus on something where it is all consuming, I mean, you wake up thinking about it, you go to bed thinking about it, you know, you dream about it, you daydream about it, um, you, you're, you're going to be doing the things, everything you do essentially is leading to that focus, trying to fulfill that, that, that mission, that focus. And so it, it, everything else falls apart because if you're focused on too many things, you're going to get nowhere. Right. Mm, if yeah. you can't stay focused on a mission or on a, on a, on an initiative, on a goal, you're never going to get anywhere. You know, um, I think it was Jim Rowan, maybe early night. Yeah. You know, I can't remember who it was. I love the quote. He says, you know, when you're like a ping pong ball in a wind tunnel, right. I mean, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you gotta be focused on something. You can't be focused on too many things, but here's yeah. the other thing about the word focus is it can work against you. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're focused on the wrong thing. Right. If you're focused on your problems, you get more problems. Yeah. If you're focused on the solutions. OK, you know, I, I mean, I, I tell you, I would not be where I am today without personal development. I mean, I've learned Jim Rowan. I live by that man's uh, philosophy. We love Jim. And, and, you know, you put it into your own understanding, of your own words. But, you know, as he says, you know, what happens happens to us all. It's all what we do about it. Mm, wow. Right? Come on. Yeah. So good. And. And this, this whole idea of focus is, is so important because I see it every day, you know, people's worlds are falling apart and all they can do is focus on the problem in front of them versus seeing beyond it and focusing on the solution. And wow. it just manifests itself either way. That's fantastic. So to go right off of that, so or off of this uh, concept and this focus on focus here. Um, what systems do you have in place that allow you to focus on that things that drive results? A lot of people, when they start, they tend to, like you were saying, focus on everything that doesn't matter. Um, so what systems do you have in place that allow you to focus on what drives results? Well, um, you know, and I'm sure you've heard the, you know, you heard the term DMO, right? Your daily method of operation, mm -hmm. right? You know, Jim Rowan talks about, most everything in life, I mean, there's a million things we could do, but there's a half a dozen that really make the difference, right? Yeah. So whatever it is, identify what that half a dozen things is and, mm. and focus on it, right? So we know that um, number one thing that needs you need to be focusing on uh, is personal development, oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, you have to become worth it, right? One of my mentors said once, wouldn't it be a shame for your business to grow? And you didn't. 
Mm. Right? Come on, come on. <laughs> and so you have to focus on personal development. Every day I tell people personal development is like bathing. You know, I mean, yep. if you don't do it every day, you're going to start stinking. Right. And Filthy. if you don't yeah. do the personal de 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 development every day, your, your mindset's going to get affected. Your, your, you know, self doubt's going to sink in and, and, you know, it's, it's self-destructing, right? So personal yeah. development. Um, another thing you have to focus on, look, I mean, the only thing that will grow any one of our businesses, okay, is new people, yeah. right? Talking to people that are not yet involved in our business or not yet using our products. So it has to be a focus, meaning it's, it's not enough to talk about it. It's yeah. not enough to teach it. You have to do it. You have yeah. to do it yourself because everything you do sets an example. Coming back to another big mistake people make is they get a half a dozen people in and then they think they're going to get their success saddle buffed and just be there to help everybody else. You have to keep doing what you're, you've got to constantly recruit. I'm constantly still looking for that next person. I'm always, yeah. you know, and maybe I won't personally enroll them. Maybe I'll, I'll give them to somebody else or whatever, but I'm constantly prospecting. So it has to be a focus. And if it's a focus for you, you teach more than by what you, by more than what you do, than what you say, it becomes a focus for every day. Cause they're looking, people are always looking at what you do. So, um, and then you have to focus on the follow-up. So it's the yeah. fundamentals, essentially, yeah. is what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Personal development, focusing on recruiting, focusing on that follow-up, uh, focusing on making sure you and your team is plugged in. Because if they're wow. not plugged in, they're, they're, they, you know, their power is gone. Mm -hmm. right? That's amazing. Yeah. That's so true. And it sounds so simple, but there's a lot of there's a lot of skill you need to develop with those different things that you just talked about. It's yeah, no, absolutely. And and one of the other words I love and I talk about it almost, you know, sometimes I tell people I'm, I'm like a broken record. I mean, <laughs> I just keep beating the fundamentals. You but know, it's a I, damn good know. song though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know what, when you hear a great song, you don't listen to it once and think, wow, that was fantastic. And never listen to it again. You listen to it again and again and again. Yeah. And, Come and on. so one of those things that I constantly preach is, you know, is focus. I take mindset, consistency, Right. Yeah. I mean, this, if you're not consistent, you're starting over all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I, mean, I, if there, if you look if, at what, probably what I'm known most for is, is consistency. I mean, yeah. I just keep stepping up to the plate. Well, it explains why you're literally the, like one of the top, probably the top network marketers in the entire world. <laughs> so it makes sense. Um, now on the uh, concept of personal development, you know, what are some of your favorite techniques that you would do that you would uh, go about maybe in your day or just techniques in general that kind of help you maintain that positive mindset because you know life hits us real hard and we have to be on the stage sometimes speaking in front of people you know maybe you can throw some techniques at, techniques at us or you know how does that work for you well i mean again coming back to uh, it needs to be a focus right yeah, it needs yeah. to be something you do um, ideally every day Right. Just like, you know, it, it becomes a habit, a fundamental, it, it, you know, just like brushing your teeth or whatever. It, it's part of something you do. Yeah. And it doesn't take much. I think the key to it is finding the venue. Yeah. Right. In the in that that you identify whether maybe for, for me, it's listening. OK. Yeah, okay. I love audio. That's right. Good. Whether yeah. Now it's on my phone. If I'm out for a hike, if I'm driving. Um, you know, if, you know, sometimes because, and I, this is going to lead me to another major point, but, but for me, it's listening, you know, some people it's reading, some people it's watching. I like watching as well. Right. But listening yeah. is probably and, and repetitive. I just keep listening to the same stuff. And you, I mean, I can listen to Jim Rowan again. I've listened to him a thousand times. If I listen to him once, I can listen to the same program and I'll get something completely new out of it. Yeah. Right. Love because I'm, I'm at a different level. And, and so I'm going to understand it differently. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's finding who you really love, who you really identify with and, and, and then that repetition. Yeah, that's so good. That's fantastic. <laughs> so with this, um, role on personal development that we're in, uh, one of the biggest hiccups and biggest challenges is specifically with network marketing is dealing with rejection. So what is some of your favorite techniques that you've used and you've dealt with to come over and to deal with rejection? Well, I, you know, from a standpoint of, um, let's say you're prospecting, let's put it in, in a real life scenario and, yeah. and people are, 
um, rejecting you, um, rejecting network marketing, rejecting your product, um, you know, whether it's, I can't do this. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that I have found to deal with people and their negative attitude towards something or their, their rejection of something is, you know, I use the feel fell pound to move someone past it. Right. Feel you know, pound. um, so, so, you know, cause the mistakes, you know, people make, I think, and this, again, I, this is, these are these subtleties, right? You tell me nobody makes any money in network marketing or I can't sell or, you know, whatever the, you know, I don't know anybody, whatever it is. And, and I start arguing with you. Okay. When you argue with somebody, they shut down completely, right? Their defenses yeah. come up and you're, and you, you've lost them. Okay. Yeah. The field felt found so basic and fundamental. And so, you know, Gabe, you're telling me you don't have any time. And I, you know, and I say, well, you have more time than you know, blah, blah, blah. And you get defensive. <laughs> right? I say, I know how you feel. Wow. Okay. So now what I've just done is I've agreed with you. Okay. Yeah. You can't argue with somebody you agree with. Right. And I say, I felt the same way. Okay. And now I empathize with you. Okay. So now you don't even know this is happening. Okay. I've disarmed you by agreeing with you. You and I are alike by empathizing with you by saying, I felt the same way. And now you're curious. Okay. Here you are. You know how I feel. You actually felt the same way, but yet you're doing it. You don't even know this is happening to you, you know, but yet you're doing <laughs> it. What, what did you find out? Feel felt found. I know how you feel. I felt the same way. What I found out was, is network marketing actually gives you time because of the leverage you can get through the efforts of other people. You know, wow. What I found out was, is if I don't change something, I'll never have any time. Okay. Mm. So you, you can take, you know, I don't have any money. I don't have any time. I can't sell. This feel felt found will literally help overcome any rejection or naysayer and, and, and granted you, you still may not get, get them to see it your way, but it doesn't create a confrontational environment, mm -hmm. right? Which shuts them down. Amazing. Wow. That's Absolutely so good. Amazing. So good. Rich, really rich. Um, all right, cool. So now I want to ask you, if you don't mind, um, kind of a little bit more of a personal question. Um, when was the last time that you had to go out of your comfort zone that you can remember? Um, you know, I, sometimes I almost feel like I live out of my comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. That's good. Um, because I'm still very shy and introverted. Right. And so, uh, you know, I still have to, you know, I get nervous, you know, every time I get on a call or get on a, you know, I still, you know, I got the butterflies so I I, in that <laughs> respect. Yeah. I get that. I still get that. You know, I, I mean, I have insecurity like everybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so, um, I think anytime you're doing something that you're not, you know, you, you feel a little timid or a little insecure, but you do it anyway. Yeah. Right. Um, specifically, I mean, I was, uh, you know, last weekend, actually, I was not last weekend, the weekend before I was a part of this, you know, mastermind group with Eric Worre. And, and it's the first time I've really ventured into something like that. Yeah. And so I'm in this room with, um, you know, all these other incredibly successful people. And, yeah. uh, you know, I just am, you know, I kind of revert back to my shy little self and I'm <laughs> in the room and, and, you know, Eric actually got me to engage by calling on me and, 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 you know, bringing me into it versus me just sitting there. And, <laughs> but it's funny, the feeling, you know, you get when he, says, John, you've dealt with this before and you, would you share? And it oh, like, puts yeah. you on the spot and you're yeah. like, all of a sudden, you know, you're, you, you get all nervous and. I can relate. That's how I felt getting on this call with you. So it's, it's gotten warmed up now though. I'm, I feel a lot better now. So, but no, that's really cool. And thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate that. So I want to take this uh, and go into a different question. I am continually fascinated by people's why, the why they do what they do. That is the most fascinating thing out of almost anything to me. Uh, so from your perspective, you've dealt with this a lot. You've coached, I would probably say hundreds, if not thousands of people through this process. So how would you encourage someone to go and dive deeper into their why? 
Well, you know, and I think Tony Robbins, you know, originally talked about this, mm. but he said, you know, the, you know, the fear of loss is a greater motivator and the desire to gain um, that, that pain is, is a bigger motivator than, than, you know, triumph, so to speak. It's really identifying where someone's pain really is and, and seeing it as a solution because it's, mm. it's harder to do something to avoid something than it is to gain something. Or it's easier mm. to do something to avoid something than it is to gain something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think identifying where someone, what somebody really, what where the pain is in someone's life. I mean, yeah. maybe it's a job that they hate, right? Mm. Um, it's some something that's going on in their life that just they're sick and tired of it. They're they're disgusted with it, and and that's their real why is to get out of that circumstance. Wow. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Right. And then what life would look like if you're not having to deal with that anymore. Right. Because, and, and, and that's so good because you're helping those people navigate, if I'm not mistaken, to dig deeper, because I feel like the initial reason why people start up their, you know, be, being a, a distributor is not necessarily the deepest part of their why. Is that correct? You think? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So helping people navigate that, that's wonderful. Um, now, what are some of the, you know, with talking about relationships and building relationships a little bit, what are some of the, some of the fundamental principles and skills of building relationships? Well, I mean, I think number one um, is uh, be a good listener. Yeah, you, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, people want to be heard. Uh, they want to be valued. They want to be appreciated. Um, you know, this business is all about how you treat people, mm. right? Yeah, it's so true. And and, you know, that old saying is, you know, they may not remember what you, what you say, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, and I, I learned this and I think it was, you know, to be honest with you, I think it spawns all the way back to my childhood with, with dyslexia and, and being un, so uncomfortable and mm. being, you know, um, you know, so many times embarrassed and so many times humiliated and mm. so I, I kind of have an intuitive edge in a sense when I can feel someone's pain or someone's uncomfortable. Yeah. And so I have a natural, I think, um, reaction to make them feel comfortable or make them feel better. That's amazing. And so that's a gift. I think that's, you know, and, but you can, and I remember hearing a story um, out of Stephen Covey. And again, this is all coming back to the personal development, right? Yeah, totally. And, Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Great book. he tells this story about empathy, yeah. okay? And he, he tells a story about this, um, this dad gets in this train car um, with his kids and um, his kids were just, you know, out of control. I mean, hollering, screaming, running around, jumping. And the dad was like in a trance, you yeah. know? I mean, he was just, you know, completely unaware of what was going on around him and, and people are getting irritated. You know, somebody finally says, you know, sir, could you get your kids under control? And it like snapped him out of a trance. And he said, you know, I'm sorry. Um, we just left the hospital. They just lost their mother. Yeah. And so you, you go from, you know, that, the, 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 you know, seek first to understand, then to be understood, right? Is if you take and understand what's going on in someone's life, because this can be whatever you want it to be for you. Right. And it's it what it is for you isn't necessarily what it is for someone else, what their why is coming back to that. Why understand where someone is coming from. instead of judging. Right. I think people hate people that judge people. Right. Yeah. So seek first to yeah, understand absolutely. and to be understood in that scenario. You know, one of irritation of this guy, pay attention to your kids to one of empathy. How can you help? How can I help you once they understood his situation? So, I mean, like when I do a three-way phone call, you know, some people just, you know, get on the phone and all they do is talk about themselves, you know, or talk about the company or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Every three-way call I do, you know, um, you know, Kobe, if we're, you know, Gabe says, Hey, you know, um, Gabe and I, we're working together and he introduces me to Cody and, and first thing I'm going to say is, Cody, you know, listen, Gabe's told me a lot about you, but if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to hear a little bit of your background, you know, yeah. what your experiences have been. What have you done, done in, you know, in your life for a living? I just sit back and listen. Wow. Right. And, and I learn so much where they're coming from, what their hot buttons are. If you just listen. Yeah. I think it's one of the most, one of the most powerful communication skills there is, 
is listening. Yeah, so good. Two ears, one mouth, right? (laughs) I absolutely love it. Uh, So we only have about two more questions for you, if you're fine with this. So this next question is going to sound like it's way out in left field, and it kind of is. So interpret it um, however you will. Use whatever interesting perspective that you would like for this. So let's imagine that you are on your deathbed. You're in the final moments, and you have your family, your friends, those close around you. What is the final piece of advice you'd like to leave them with? Wow. Um, take your time. <laughs> yeah. This one gets everyone. Yeah. This doesn't have to be at all related to network marketing. Exactly. I mean, it's anything, you know, yeah. left field. you know, um, I think probably as I think about it, um, don't, you know, just don't let yourself get caught up in the drama in mm-hmm. being upset with somebody you know, in the bigger picture, what does it really matter? You know, meet yeah. people where they are, love them for who they are. Yeah. And don't let yourself get all caught up in something that happened. It means really nothing in the bigger picture of things. Forgive people and just move forward. That's good. That's wow. so good. I really appreciate you sharing that. I and love then, that answer. As much as I hate, I hate the final question. It's, it's just like, it's always, it's time's up. <laughs> it's so frustrating. But John, um, just what's next, brother? What's next in your life? What's going on? Can you kind of share a little bit about how the end of 2020 is going to be for you and maybe into 2021? Well, um, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. You, you know, Jeff for birdie, I'm sure you know who he is. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. One of the, I think all time ever, um, top earners in the industry, you yep. know, 110 million or something earning. And he's just, he's, you know, I've gotten to not like we're friends anyway, but we're, you know, I know him. He does probably know who I am. And he said something about, um, you know, on this mastermind, he came in virtually and he said, rather than retiring, I refired. Instead wow. of retire, I refired. That's so good. I love and that. I guess that's the way I feel right now. I love this industry. And I guess for me, I want people, I'd love, I want to, um, I love doing the business. I love the yeah. people. I feed off of it. I love seeing people come out of their shell and transform into somebody powerful that they never thought they could be. Uh, so I want to do more of that. Uh, I also really believe that I have some value yeah. uh, to give to people um, in my, in what I've learned in what I've written in the tools that I have. And, and, and I, I, it's going to be a focus. It's going to be a focus to try to, you know, I've not been the best promoter in the world. You know, I struggle with self-promotion. I, I, I uh, uh, and, and it's an area I'm going to work on is trying to get, people more aware of some of the stuff I have, because I think it can really help. Oh, yeah. You have Absolutely. some great value, my friend. And, and again, I want to remind everybody that's listening to this podcast or watching this podcast that you can find John's books in the links below. Um, and John, I really hope that you do self-promote more because you have some serious golden nuggets uh, that you've not only shared with us, but in your books, I've read um, your most recent book and it's phenomenal absolutely Thank phenomenal you. dude and uh and i think that people need to hear that because you got a lot of people that are scared with this transition with the pandemic right now that book is perfect so yeah um but dude i really That's appreciate, appreciate having you on yeah and we really appreciate having you on the show thank you so much for your time as it's so valuable yeah i really appreciate it. and everyone watching you go ahead and show john some love if you got any value at all from this and it's impossible that you didn't hit that like button comment here show john some love 